Welcome to season three of the Twin Day podcast. Twin Day, meaning Let's Go in Kiswahili, is an accelerator focused on equipping Tennessee-based black and brown founders with the resources needed to grow and scale their businesses. I'm M. Wilder, Twin Day program manager here at the Nashville Entrepreneur Center and your host of the Twin Day podcast. We're grateful for support from the David and Rebecca Clements family with additional funding from the Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee. Thank you for believing in our mission. For past seasons and our latest episodes, visit ec.co slash Twin Day podcast. Let's go. All right, y'all. Today in the studio, we got Nashville native Netta Dobbins. Hey, y'all. Owner and principal consultant over at Netta Dobbins Marketing and Consulting, as well as Tennessee's Grow with Google digital coach. Welcome, Netta. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So let's jump in. First question I ask every guest, you know, we all have community around us helping us progress, thrive. Can you talk to us a little bit about who are those five people or five entities that really keep you progressing in life and in business? Yeah. So the first would be um, my fiance. (laughs) Of course, he's going to continually push me always there through the ups and downs. Um, Family is important, too, because they offer a different perspective. Like they know where you've been. They know where you can go. Um, I have a group of hometown friends that always have my back. And I also have a group of entrepreneurial friends, right? So when something is happening in business and I'm like, these people with these corporate jobs ain't going to know what I'm talking about. I go to that group of entrepreneurial friends. They help guide me. We share resources um, and all that. And then last but not least, probably should have said it first, God. <laughs> God is super important. When I'm frustrated, you know, I find myself praying. Um When things are right, I'm like, thank you, God, right? So he has um, an enormous impact on everything that I do. I love it. So community, God, faith, Mm -hmm. right? Just a a big web of folks kind of pushing you forward. Um, So in thinking about your journey and and thinking about kind of where you spend your time, where you spend your focus, can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, I've heard a little bit about your journey to the success that you have today. Um, Can you share with our listeners just what has your path looked like and how did you land? Talk about the inception of Netta Dobbins Marketing and Consulting. Yeah, it's been a journey. Um, I like to say that I never started off wanting to be an entrepreneur. It kind of just fell in my lap. So as Em said, I am a Nashville native. Shout out to the few of us that are here today. Um, I went to Hume Fogg, went to Middle Tennessee State University um, and got a degree in communications and marketing. From there, I was like, you know, I want to work in entertainment. Yeah, Nashville has a country music scene, but I wanted to do something bigger, right? So This is the weirdest. I don't think we've ever talked about this, but I had a dream and Jennifer Aniston was in my dream for some reason. We have not talked about this. Listen, (laughs) it, it was so weird. So she was in my dream and I woke up and I was like, I need to look up what publicity firms represent Jennifer Aniston. And it was like, (laughs) it was literally a list of the top 10 PR firms. And I sent cold emails out to all of them. And I was like, hey, are you looking for an intern? Like, I had just got my degree, but I'm asking for internships. This is how, like, driven I was. And they were either in New York City or L.A. Reached out to all 10. Um, Only one got back to me, and it was in New York City. And they were like, come for this unpaid internship. And I was like, bet. I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills, but I'm going to go, right? So one month later, I was in New York City, had never been to New York City before, trying to find a job, trying to figure out this communication stuff. So took the unpaid internship, was working at um, an agency here, free time or freelancing as a communication specialist, um, and then took an aftercare job in New York City in the Bronx. So I was living in Brooklyn, working in Manhattan and doing a job in the Bronx. So that's like two hours. every day of just travel right um so did that for a while got a full-time job at a different agency did that for a while realized I wasn't really like so set on communications transitioned into advertising um and that was great but throughout like both of these or all three of these like career paths trying to find myself I found that I was the only person of color in 
like the majority of those rooms, right? So that led me to starting a group me group chat that at the time I called Minorities and Media Connect. I added the people of color that I knew that worked in advertising and communications. They added their friends. In two weeks, we had over 300 people, right? Wow, wow. So I was like, oh, you know, this is supposed to be a group chat, but now everybody's asking me to like do stuff with this group of people. And companies were asking me, hey, you know, we're looking for a diverse talent of color. Um, how can we work together to ensure that we have a pipeline of diverse talent, right? So that was my first business, Minorities and Media Connect. It ended up being a diversity consultancy um, where I grew it to a community of 10,000 professionals, um, worked with a variety of companies like Intuit, MailChimp, Capital One, like Fortune 100, Fortune 500 companies, as well as advertising companies. Um, and it was great for the eight years that I ran it, right? Um, at the end of last year, I was like, I'm tired. And I, I don't think we can maybe talk about this, too, but I yeah. don't think that in entrepreneurship you talk about like when is the moment you wake up and you're like, oh, no, this is a job that I was trying to escape from. Mm. Right. And that's what it felt like. And I was like, I'd been feeling it for maybe like two years at this point. And I was like, it's time to do something else. So at the end of December. Closed down that business, um, which was hard because that was the business. I say it was my claim to fame. I was featured in Forbes, Adweek, had a commercial during the BET Awards for McDonald's. And it was like so many amazing things that happened. And it taught me so much about entrepreneurship. Yeah, right? I remember reading that reflection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, everybody's like, are you sad? I'm like, no, I've been sad for two years. I'm ready to get out of this, right? Um, so close it in December of 2023. Um, but in January of 2023, I had... The opportunity. So rewind again. Um, 2020, we know what happened. March of 2020. Um, I had quit my full time job to run Minorities and Media Connect, Mem Connect for short, full time. So I was like, you know, let me go visit my family for a month. I can do whatever I want. I'm an entrepreneur, right? Um, got here the night that the big tornado hit and destroyed all of East Nashville. And I was like, whoa, that's crazy. And then the next week, the world shut down because of COVID. So I couldn't even go back to New York, right? So that is what brought me back to Nashville, right? So after COVID, the restrictions were landing up or whatever. I was like, I'm just going to stay here. I like Nashville now. It's growing. Um, so knowing that, um, Grow With Google approached me. Right. And they were like, hey, we're looking for a Tennessee digital coach. We're looking for an entrepreneur who knows marketing, et cetera, et cetera. So I was like, of course, we'd love to interview for it. Got it. Um, so January of 2023, I started working with the Grow With Google program. Um, and the program essentially is where I am able to help small businesses, entrepreneurs, startups, nonprofit leaders really understand marketing, really understand how to utilize Google tools to scale their business. Um, did that, realized that I really, really enjoyed helping businesses understand marketing and unlock business challenges. And that's what led me to Nana Dobbins Marketing and Consulting and what what you see with everything that I do today. So very long story. <laughs> no, it's every, it, I'm also putting pieces together because, yeah. you know, you, Netta, were like, I would say one of the first people when I moved to Nashville almost a year ago, be one year on Juneteenth. Um, I may have spoken to you before I actually got to Nashville, but was introduced to you as a, a Grow With Google digital, digital mm -hmm. coach mm -hmm. and came recommended from folks in the ecosystem as just like someone that I needed to connect with. Um, and so, you know, in terms of just, I know you're from Nashville, but you've clearly just built up an incredible reputation um, in the Black founder community, but really beyond in Nashville's larger, larger ecosystem. So I love continuing to hear your story because that's not necessarily something that I've gotten um, to hear before. So obviously passionate about marketing, have this new consultancy Let's jump into and in thinking about our listeners, really targeting um, founders. What would you say when you think about some of the common mistakes that founders make when they're starting their business? They're getting things up and running, building their brand. What are some common marketing mistakes? And I guess what would you say? What What is some practical advice that you would give to founders who yeah. are beginning that journey? Yeah. So let's start with mistakes because I see a lot of them, right? Um, one is listening to everything you hear on social media. The social media gurus will tell you you need to be on TikTok, Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram, and all that. You don't. 
pick one platform that makes sense for where your audience is and what your product, the product or service that you're selling um, and stick to that. Get really good at that before expanding. We try to spread ourselves too thin. But as entrepreneurs, yeah, we are marketing, but we're also trying to handle invoices. We're also trying to deliver the service or deliver the product is too much. So focus on one social media platform that makes sense um, Two, not focusing on email marketing. Right. If you follow me anywhere on social media, you know that I'm screaming about email marketing every day. And that's primarily because with email marketing, um, you have a higher chance of converting the people that you're targeting to actually purchase from you. Because when um, when they sign up for your newsletter, they all have already shown interest in what it is. Right. Unlike on social media where you're yelling and you're hoping that the algorithm puts your content in front of the right people, these people have already opted in. They've already shown interest. They're going to be more likely to buy, right? Um, and then what is one more? The final marketing tip is just not staying consistent um, and not building brands to grow into. And I, I actually made this mistake, right? Um, especially with restarting a business. Um, I got a whole new website done and new font colors. And I'm like, this is my vibe. This is what I'm expecting mm -hmm. now. And then like a year later, I'm like, oh, no, like I have grown bigger than what I thought I was going to be um, or what I thought this little brand, little brand was going to be. Right. So when you are thinking about like the beginning stages of your business, make sure that you're building it, like build a frame, but don't be so focused on what goes into it because things are going to change. and You're going to want to elevate some things or remove some things as your business grows. Got you. Got you. And I want to focus on the the first mistake that you highlighted, because I feel like we, even if, if I'm considering myself just a regular consumer, right, mm -hmm. scrolling through social media, I, I think, I don't think I've ever heard someone just say, kind of hone in on one thing, hone in on one platform. What are some, so let's say my audience is primarily on Instagram. Mm -hmm. What are some, I guess, what what does it look like for, in terms of maintenance and upkeep, scheduling? Yeah. What are some tools that you recommend founders use um, to make sure that they stay on top of their social media game or just stay on top of their marketing, especially for folks who are don't necessarily have a budget, yeah. who are doing it on their own, the solopreneur? Yeah. So I want to start by saying... Um, the algorithms that Instagram and Facebook have in place are always going to make it hard for you to reach your audience unless you are paying, right? Stop thinking about Instagram as I have to get 1,500 likes in order for me to be successful. I want you to start thinking about Instagram as your portfolio, right? So if I want to find out more about you, I can go on your Instagram page. I can see everything that you're talking about, right? Um, so once again, let's let's stop thinking about likes. Let's stop thinking about views. Yes, we want those. But when you are starting out, you're not going to get all of that unless you're paying thousands of dollars for that, right? In terms of tools to stay consistent um, and just strategies overall, the first thing I want you to do is put yourself in your customer's shoes and you need to highlight what are the pain points or the value needs for my customers and how does my product or service alleviate that, right? Start by asking yourself questions around that and then say, okay, what type of content can I create to showcase that? Another mistake people have is I'm on social media to be on social media. We are on social media to build brand awareness and to sell, right? So when you put yourself in your customer's position and you really understand, like, what is it that they're looking for, you can create more um, focused content that should hopefully drive people to purchase from you, right? Um, so do that. Sit down. Think about what your customer needs to create a content plan. What are you even talking about? How is it going to come to life? Are these all static posts? Are you doing videos, reels? What is it? Map that out. Um, I typically recommend mapping it out for a month and trying to pre-plan that content and pre-record that content as much as you can. Because once again, as entrepreneurs, things are different every day. Like we could right. have a fire tomorrow and then we have a lax day the next day. And like, you can't wait to the day of to try to think of like content to post because you're not going to do it, right? It's going to be a whole three hours of you sitting there trying to figure out what exactly is it that you want to post. So pre-plan that, pre-record that as much as possible. When it comes to scheduling out the content, um, 
I believe Instagram now has a built-in platform that allows you to schedule the content. Um, but there are also platforms like Hootsuite or Planoli and things like that where you can pay a fee um, and schedule out as much content as you want to. So those are my social media tips. Got you. And when I was looking at, just in terms of when we were getting incoming applications for Twin Day, um, and I'm sure other business accelerators see this, in terms of folks articulating kind of where they need the most support, it, I'm telling you time and time again, you see a lot of you see a lot of pieces in particular, right, with founders of color around access to capital. We know we don't have to jump into a conversation about the systems in place in this country ha- that have enabled that problem to persist for founders of color mm-hmm. disproportionately. The second one is marketing. I think. There's, I'm sure there's a lot of different folks who are really trying to sell some premium marketing supports, contracted work. Um, folks just don't have a budget line for that when they're first starting off. Um, I think there's just a lot of like questions and mystery on like, how should I be doing this, right? I think to your point, folks, founders spread themselves thin at the mm-hmm. beginning. When, what are some, just in terms of, I know you've already spoken just about honing in on one particular platform, but when, at what point when you're at an idea stage or beginning, just starting your business, when do you start thinking really intentionally about marketing? Mm -hmm. Are there low cost or innovative ways, creative ways to be sure that your marketing game is as on point as it can be from the jump? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, (laughs) So I'm going to, I'm going to take that into, um, I'm going to look at a couple of different ways, right? So when you are first starting your business, getting the word out there is marketing, right? Um, You have to tell people what you're doing. And I think a lot of times small business owners are like, it's my business, but it's not me. And I need to separate. I want my business to speak for itself, blah, blah, blah. But at the beginning, you are your business, right? People know you. They don't know this business. So you need to get out there. You need to be comfortable speaking about it. And I think a lot of times um, when I hear people say that, I'm like, you just want to hide behind your business because there's something in there. You're like, you're afraid to tell people or you don't know exactly what to say or you're not ready to get the feedback or whatever it is about the business. But you are the business. You have to be front facing. You have to go to networking events. You have to talk to people. Um, Yes, get a website. Yes, get a social pages and all that but like when you are focused on brand awareness like you're really really new it's going to take you making connections with the right people so getting out there and talking right that's one when you have honed in on your products or services and you've been able to sell it a couple of times so you're generating revenue for this specific product or service um, and you can clearly articulate what it is why people want it then that's when you can start thinking about investing in marketing support right because sometimes people will come to me and they're like oh I need help figuring out how to sell this but you haven't sold it you don't know what the value is you don't know if the customer wants it so what do you need me for that's a business that's a sales conversation a business ops everything not a marketing conversation right yes I can help you sell more of it yes I can help you get clear on the language but you have to be confident in what you're selling first and know that people want it right and then when that happens you can invest in a person you can invest in an agency you can invest in an intern um But I say that because like marketing only works if the founder or the C-suite or whatever can articulate what it is that we're marketing. And if you can't do that, and if you can't sell it, marketing is going to fall flat and we're going to feel like it's a wasted effort. Understood. Thank you. And so, you know, I've had the opportunity to sit in on, uh, you know, shout out. We've been this year for Twin Day. We've had the opportunity to contract with Netta um, for some VIP intensive sessions that are intimate, about 10 founders, um, where Netta has opportunity to touch base, um, really get down into the weeds of folks' business and provide some very tangible um, supports. And so I'm going to take us to kind of the last session that we had and want to just talk about, so you've put all the things in place, you're really honing in, you understand your audience, you're honing in on a particular platform um, with regard to, to marketing and creating some brand awareness. Um, you scheduled your social media, you scheduled your engagement, blog posts, newsletters, et cetera. A couple months have gone by, you're not getting the traction that you want. So let's talk about analytics. Let's talk about taking a look at 
whether you're paying per click, um, looking at conversion, sales, et cetera, what, so that you can pivot, potentially mm-hmm. change what you're doing, potentially invest a little bit more coin. Mm-hmm. Can you walk us through, a lot of people got questions about Google Analytics and how do they actually, um, for maybe the non-technical founder, like how do I even translate yeah. um, so that I can pivot and, and maybe make some different moves for the next quarter? Can you just walk us through maybe just highlighting just the importance of taking a look at what strategies you're implementing, the outcomes, mm-hmm. and if there's particular tools that you can walk folks through just in, in terms of looking at analytics and yeah. conversion, et cetera? So every time I talk about data, um, I have a popular quote that y'all will probably know. men lie women lie data does it right um so your data is going to tell so many stories around if what you're doing regarding marketing regarding sales regarding whatever is working right um and a tool that i of course refer to the most is google analytics it is a free tool that you can connect with your website and it's going to be able to show you how many people are coming to your website where are they coming from where do they live what more demographic information around them um how much are they spending what pages are they interested in et cetera et cetera and that can be overwhelming, right? Especially yes. if I don't look at data, I have so much other things to do. I'm not going to sit here and try to learn Google, Google Analytics. So there are a few key things that I say focus on. Um, and this can be on Google Analytics. It can be on any analytics platform, right? One, you need to understand where people are coming from, especially if you are focused on marketing, right? Um, where people are coming from is going to show you if the marketing channels that you are focusing on are actually driving interest to your site or your product or whatever it is that you're promoting, right? If we see that, let's say we're on TikTok and we're on Instagram, right? And we see that TikTok is driving more um, people to the website and more sales and Instagram is not doing anything. Maybe I want to spend less time on Instagram and more time on TikTok because it's my moneymaker right now, right? I probably want to rethink my whole Instagram strategy as well, right? So that's one thing. Two, you want to, you probably already have an understanding of who your audience is, um, but sometimes that's just based on gut and not data, right? So see who your audience is, see where they are. And location is important. I gave this example in class. I'm going to give you two. Um, The first one is jam versus jelly, right? In the South, we say jelly. Up North, y'all say jam, right? So if I find that all of my customers are in Tennessee, When I'm thinking about search engine optimization or when I'm thinking about writing content, I'm going to use words like jelly because that's what people are going to search for, right? Um, Another example on the flip side is let's say I have a sporting goods company, right? And I sell surfboards and I sell snowboards. And I see that the majority of my customers are coming from New York. On my homepage, I'm probably going to put snowboards, not surfboards, right? Because I know that those are probably going to sell more, right? So there are a lot of ways that you can look at the data and make um, your own assumptions or figure out your own story around it. Um, Three, you need to look at bounce rate, right? And bounce rate essentially says, um, how long do people stay on my page before they go and do something else, right? We want this to be as low as possible because we want people to engage with the content. We want them to read it. We want them to go to multiple pages, right? Um, So if you notice that you have a high bounce rate, what can you do to your homepage to get people to stay? Do you need to put a pop-up on there? Do you need to put something more appealing, like your top-selling product on there versus whatever you have on it now, right? So I will say that um, data, yes, is a bunch of numbers, And it takes you sitting down and really making the correct um, assumptions about it to be able to make the right changes. Um, Data is going to point you in the direction, but it's not going to give you the answer. So another thing you have to do is as you are revising your marketing, revising your strategies, continue to look at the data. Don't do something and forget about it and come back in three months. right? Right. We need to be looking at it constantly to see, okay, how can we continue to optimize the things that we're doing so that we are driving the, the goal, right? The one goal, one goal that we set for the website or the ad or whatever. I love it. And so I know we'll share with folks just kind of how to learn more about your services and getting engaged with you. I do want to talk about the, the the Netta Dobbins newsletter. So talk, give us, you know, without revealing the whole recipe. Yeah. What is your, what is your approach to email marketing? Yeah. You're like an email marketing ambassador. I love it. Um, talk about it. I love it. I like, I geek out about 
<laughs> well, here's your here's your platform. Here's Get platform. after it. <clears throat> All right. Um, the first thing that I want y'all to make sure you pay attention to is your headlines. I have been bragging that I have the most unhinged headlines. Like, I, co- I co-sign that. Yeah, they're very unhinged. Like, I'll give you an example. Um, w- my most recent headline was, True Life, I Was an OnlyFans Girl. <laughs> and the newsletter, this is true. The newsletter talked about how someone... Um, essentially tried to hack my Instagram account, couldn't get into it, then took all of my swimsuit pictures and made an OnlyFans with them and then followed every male follower on my Instagram account. So the premise of it was cybersecurity and the importance of having two-factor authorization. And then it led to a workshop that I'm doing with Grow With Google about cybersecurity and protecting your small business, right? So we see how it all came together. But that subject line was like, what? She was the only fans, girl. Like, how do how we get here, right? Um, so your subject lines are important. And you want to make it interesting but still relatable to the content. It doesn't need to be something completely off the wall, right? Um, two, with my content, I... Also put myself in my audience's shoes and I use AI to I'm like, what are the top questions that small business owners have about marketing? Right. And I'll take one of those and I'll write a story like what's my personal experience with cybersecurity? Right. Mm. What's my personal experience with email marketing or whatever? And I share that. Right. So the first part of my newsletter is probably going to be a personal story or like advice that I've recently learned or something that I want to share. Right. In the middle, I'm going to talk about tools that I'm using, grow a Google workshop, so whatever. And then most recently, um, I feel like I'm very business, business, business all the time. And I listened to a podcast by Amy Porterfield, who I adore. Um, And she had mentioned how like at the end of her newsletter, she was going to start putting like notes from Amy, which just highlighted outside of business, like who am I to allow your audience to build like a real connection with you or for you to seem Mm -hmm. a little bit more relatable, right? So at the bottom of my newsletters, I now have Netta's favorite things where I talk about like just what's happening in my personal life, things that I'm enjoying, things that I'm hating, et cetera, et cetera. So I use my newsletter as a way to educate, but also um, relate to my subscribers and let them know I'm also a small business owner. I'm also an entrepreneur. I know the ups and downs and everything that happens. Um, so, yeah, that's my my format. I love it, man. I love it. And before before we kind of transition out, what what else is going on in your life? What what's what's the balance? Uh, I have a lot, so I'm getting so yeah. Let's let's talk about balance. Like, does <laughs> balance actually exist? I think not. Um, so yes, I am a small business owner. I have Netta Dobbins Marketing Consulting. I am Tennessee's Grow with Google Digital Coach. I'm getting my MBA from Vanderbilt University. I'm getting married. Um, there's a lot going on, right? So I don't believe balance occurs naturally. I believe that you have to create it yourself, right? Yes. So I live and die by my Google Calendar. I put everything on it, date night, school days, when I'm doing school work, when I'm taking a nap, I live by it, right? And if it's not on my calendar, it does not exist. So I'm really focused on creating the boundaries myself um, and trying to find some sort of balance. Where can, I don't know where to find you. Where can our (laughs) listeners find you? Subscribe to the Unhinged newsletter <laughs> and and learn more. I, I think I'm going to rename it the Unhinged newsletter. <laughs> I, I like that. Unhinged unhinged marketing tips, okay? Um, but I'm easy to find everywhere at Netta Dobbins, N-E-T-T-A-D-O-B-B-I-N-S on everything. Instagram is my primary channel. Um, LinkedIn, I'm there too. And then NettaDobbins.com where you can sign up for my newsletter, learn about my workshops and uh, listen to my podcast and I'm going to eventually keep doing soon. Yes. yes. I love it. And look, we are congrats on your upcoming wedding. Um, yeah. Thank you for your ongoing commitment to, to Nashville, mm-hmm. to small business owners, to founders of color. Um, very excited. We have twin, the twin day program has one more, um, VIP intensive with Netta coming up. Um, it's a good one too. Sales. Yes. So, uh, excited to continue to engage. Thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge with our listeners. And yeah, I, I'm excited for what's next for you and to, to future collaboration. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening. And thanks to the David and Rebecca Clemens family, along with funding support from Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee for making this podcast possible. From the Chase Studio at the Nashville Entrepreneur Center, I'm M. Wilder, inviting you to engage with our Twin Day Accelerator program by visiting ec.co slash Twin Day.